We are live. Hello, everybody. My name is Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel. And we thank you guys very much for spending this Shabbat. It is a Shabbat. It is a beautiful day. It is a wonderful day. It is a restful day. And we hope that uh, you guys are enjoying your Shabbat. Gentlemen, how are you guys doing? Good. 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 Made it through a week. Yeah. How was your week? It was, uh, it was a pretty decent week. I think it was pretty good. Okay, did you look a little tired? I'm good. A little I tired? Just took a nap, I'm good. Took a little nap, he's, he's good. Uh, Nicole, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Good. Is We will wait, give it a little bit, see if anyone joins the chat. We were having some technical difficulties, so some things were going up and down, and we were trying to figure this out, but I think we got it figured out, and hopefully the internet will stay alive enough that we are able to um, keep this, this rolling. So, uh, before that, and I guess while everybody is, uh, or anybody that is going to be coming into this, we will break into a couple of things real quick, and we have this ready, and um, I guess I we won't be able to pop this in the link. Do you have the link over there, Nicole? You can drop this into the chat. Um, yeah. All right, she's going to be yeah. dropping this into the chat, and so... As we go over this, um, this is we are to what we call revision three of this, and um, we are we actually we actually made this link available to you guys today, so you guys are able to um, grab this. You can download this this document. You guys can can look over this. You guys can pass this on. Um, it is only to where we are in numbers five, though, and so um, as we add things or as we change things, um, one thing to be mindful of is the revision at the top and. Um, if you guys hear the top of our roof talking, that is simply our roof talking. It's tin, and the sun is shining on it, and it makes all sorts of noise as uh, the tin expands and goes up and down and, and various things of that nature. So um, I guess let's begin. Let's do a quick little prayer, uh, and uh, I know there's probably nobody out there, but if there is somebody out there and you guys hear this later, um, we will, uh, this is prayers for everybody. So, Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything. We come before you as your people. We come before you as your tribe. Thank you so much for delivering your Torah. Thank you so much for delivering your word in the in the way that you have. And, and more than anything, thank you for delivering your word made flesh. We thank you for your son and we thank you for just your creation. Father, there are so many things that we need to thank you for and that you have given to us. And the very breath that we breathe every single moment is a gift from you. And we can't thank you enough. We can't thank you enough for walking with us helping us, living with us, and being part of us. And in fact, even designing us. Father, your designs and your, your creations are amazing. And, and we, we are so humbled to have a creator that is so great that we can walk alongside him and that he cares so much about us and his creations. And Father, we can't thank you enough. And Father, we honor you. We praise your name. We lift your name up. We ask that the world knows your Torah and the greatness of your Torah and the, the greatness of your word. Father, please bless this meeting, this ecclesia that we are having here. Father, let it fall upon the ears of those who want to hear this and those who need to hear this. Father, please bless those individuals that are listening and, and work with them in their lives. Father, you know our needs, you know our wants, and we appreciate everything that you have ever done for us. Father, We more than anything, we appreciate your son, we appreciate his sacrifice, and for giving us a chance at the kingdom to come. Father, we ask that our words and deeds and actions will speak for the Torah that is in our lives and that the Torah is representing and shining through us and being delivered to others. Father, thank you so much for everything. We ask this in the name of Yahushua. Amen. All right. Um, before I go over the laws real quick, I want to go into um, a question that we had over here. And this is from Julie Traeger. And she, she asked, this is the question. Um, thank you for sharing and encouraging us all. Question, how do you start Shabbat as a family? And so um, let's uh, let's see if uh, so. Go ahead. I would say we start. It starts technically in the evening of Friday, which would be preparation day, the sixth day. It starts for us there. We uh, usually do everything prepared for before Shabbat starts, and at sunset we begin our Shabbat. We basically all come together as a family. We usually pray, maybe read a little Bible, and then we all go to bed. And in the morning, it'll be the next day, which will be Shab the day of Shabbat in the morning, and we'll wake up and then we'll. Pray, we'll eat breakfast, read together, do one of these videos, and our, that's kind of how our Shabbat it begins. Yeah, and so a lot of it is get it's it's a race on preparation day. It's a race on preparation day that we race to the end of the day, and it's always a lot of work for Nicole, a lot of work for everybody because we are dialing in the rest of the week. We're trying to get everything down where we have animals and different things. We got to get that stuff down, 
And in the morning, it, it's it's usually a little lax. We still have cows and chickens. We got to feed the cows and chickens. And you know, there's there's um, precedence in the in the in the scriptures that you know we're supposed to take care of our animals. We're supposed to take care of um, you know if our oxen has fallen in a ditch on Shabbat, we're supposed to pick it up out of the ditch and things of that nature. And so it is it is a lax day. So yeah, when we get up, um, it's usually um, you know uh, it's about the same time. We're we're, we're pretty early around here. Um, and then we a uh, couple snacks. And then uh, we we usually pray as a family, and the the prayers. Uh, I guess the biggest part of the prayers is actually praying for you guys. Um, the majority of the prayers that we pray, uh, the boys, the three boys, we have our prayer request list, and they pray, and then they pray for everybody out there who's had prayer request lists, and we've we've had ones for years, and we pray for a majority of, of those folks every 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 week. And so once we're done with those prayers, then we'll read our Bible. Um, and right now we are in for family. We're in where. What we are we, in Acts. Acts, yeah. So we are in the, uh, I think it's towards the end of Acts, aren't we? Yeah, it's like Acts. I think we're, we're in Acts the middle. In the middle. Acts 18, I think. Is yeah, one. middle of Acts. And so we, we, we cruise all around. What what did we do before that? We, did we just we run started the, from the, the beginning. Yeah, we so just kept Matthew, going. Yeah, so we, we started this one just in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Um, and now we're in Acts and we're reading through the, the letters of Brother Shaul and trying to figure out his writings and, and trying not to be weak-minded when we read them. Um, but yeah, that is that is how we do it, and then we, we chill. It's usually um, you know we, well the, the boys are you know we since we have ten pit bulls we have to do things in shifts, and so we are not able to you know just everybody go take a nap. But we uh, you know two people are usually out taking care of the pit bulls, and the other people nap, and it's just it's just a real lax day. We don't have anything set. Um, we don't go anywhere. We definitely don't uh, you know we, we don't just go anywhere. It's, it's a it's a day that's set for this house. And we try to do um, the very best of what's going on. Emissary of Elohim's in. Much love, brother. How are you? I hope you are well. Anyone else in here? The Grand. The Grand. The grand. Hey, the Grand is here. Who else is here? Christian. Who is it? Christian Elias. Christian? I haven't seen Christian before. And hey. also try. I don't know how to try, say that. Try. Uh, yeah, there's a couple of you guys in there. Hey, how are some you new guys people? doing? Oh. Yeah, some new people in there. Yeah, much love to everybody out there. Okay. And Galena. Galena, so thank you guys. Thank you guys very much for joining in. Let's take a quick look at these, and I don't want, I, I, this is a, sounds a bad way to say it. I don't want to bore you guys with this, but there's never a way that you guys should be bored with this. And since the, the laws of our creator are not going over enough, this is a what, they, what I call a fleshed out version of what I believe two numbers five is what we have. And so Nicole has put this on there. And um, we we shared this in the description, and I did you put this in the chat? The it, also at the chat. This is now public, so you guys can click on this, and you guys are free to use this however you guys want. Um, obviously, it's Yah's Laws, sorted by uh, the Yahoo and the Torah channels. All we're doing is basically just sorting these and putting them down. So if there's people out there that are like, well, the laws of God are nailed to the tree and this, you can give them this, and, you know, this ask them you know which which law would you like nailed to a tree and you know if we're if we're going down that road of, of saying you know it's nailed to the tree i mean the very first commandment is be fruitful so i guess we can be a lazy slug and lay on the couch and never get anything done and and just basically be super lazy and you know we're breaking commandments because we're not being fruitful in that message so every commandment is very very important and um it, it, it's super good all right yes and so what do we have we have christian in here and emissary of Elohim, silver, 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 shalom. Yes, yes, thanks, guys. Um, appreciate it. All right, commandment number one is be fruitful. Commandment number two is multiply. Three is replenish the earth. Four, subdue it, have dominion over everything. Five, the herb bearing in every tree is for food. Man and women, man and woman should build their own families. Master sin. Every cling moving thing that lives shall be food for you. Don't eat the blood. Now, when you guys see this don't eat the blood, please notice all of these verses under that. Every time that we find a verse, we don't add it as a commandment, but they're all commandments. And so there's like six or so commandments in that don't drink the blood. And, you know, other people have said this and talked about this before because we, we didn't know why people would drink the blood. But it makes more sense when we're talking about satanists and evil people and the people that are like literally doing their evil they'll drink the blood and so um obviously we don't 
do that, being Yah's people. And the more the commandment is repeated, the more important it is. He's obviously trying to get a message across to us. Yeah, and you know, that's that's a that's a key point right there because Shabbat is mentioned 240 plus times in the scriptures. So there's obviously something very important about us being here. And when you try to tell someone something, you'll tell them maybe more than once, trying to make sure they get it across, make sure they understand. Because if you tell them once and they don't get it, you got to keep telling them until they actually get it. Yeah. And it's it is important. And once this is there's only one day that's blessed. And if we're not keeping it, then we're we're missing out on blessings. All right. So walk before me and be perfect. Guard Yahuwah's covenant laws, statutes, and commandments. And these and, are repeated several times. Yeah. Here we have we call them sub commandments. Yeah, sub commandments or just reiteration of this. This is where it is. But look at all of these right here with with guard Yahuwah's laws. Um, it's all over there. And I heard you do think things after he so many times to keep my laws. We're only in Numbers 5. We still have a whole other book and have to deal with that says keep my laws. Why would he just throw it away after Basically, going through all of this? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, commandment 12. Every male shall be circumcised at eight days old. 13. Teach your children commands and guard the way of Yahuwah. Now, this is very important. I, I think this is one of the most important things there is. Um, gentlemen, what do you guys think? What, how would your life be? What would your life be without learning these commands? You guys would be um, rebels. Yeah, I'd probably have a lot of bad friends, probably doing bad things. I mean, I'd probably try to be part of the world. It would be different things if I didn't have a kind of guide stone. Like and that. you guys, I mean, you guys have never been on a date. You guys have never even hung out with a girl before. Oh. <laughs> you, we don't watch movies. We don't watch TV. Um, you know, you guys don't feel like you're missing out on the world. I don't think so. Because most of it's worldly, and it's not gonna. It's gonna end you up in hell. So. I could name you off ten famous actors, and you guys would never have a clue who they are. We would have no idea. So you guys don't feel a little, uh, little missing out. I, I, I don't. Not really. No, not really. I don't feel like I'm missing anything because it's like I don't really know what's going on out there. So it's like I really don't miss it. Nah. Well, that's good. Yeah. And so this is part of it. Is separation from the rest of the world is what we want to be separated. All right, remember Yahuwah's name for all generations. What do you got, Nicole? Emissary says the link doesn't work unless it's in the description. Oh. Uh, oh, I think it'd be a moderator to post uh, links to get a clear one. Are you not moderating? Not I'm not on, on this your account. channel. Oh. I uh, well, we, we can fix this. Okay, yeah, cool. So we will get that fixed. I got the, uh, the uh, my chaperones here. Not my chaperones, but my uh, uh, assistants. Assistants. All right. All right. Yes, uh, the technicians. <laughs> yes, technicians. All right, so remember Yahuwah's name for all generations. Now, are we remembering Yah's name when we call him God? No. No, that's because that it's not is, his name. It's a title. It's not a real name. It's actually a pagan-derived name. It is It's what? just when you call someone... If you were to call someone uh, boss, and you're just like, hey, boss, and that's not his real name, but his name is really like... Mister. Uh, hey, mister. Yeah. How you doing? Yeah, so, or what he says, call me by my name, you can just call me by my name, and my name, his name is Bob, and you're like, oh, hey, Bob, but then you still call him mister. I mean, he's not going to appreciate that. Why, why do you guys suppose it got changed, I think, what, 1,100 times in the Bible or more? I would say probably because they didn't want a true connection there's a, with... There's a separation mm -hmm. people don't want us to have with Yah. There's, like, people don't want us to be close to Yah, and the best way to separate someone is to not know them, and when you don't know them, you're not going to know their names. You're going to... You're going to uh, not remember their name at all. You, that's how you. That's the beginning of knowing someone. When you meet someone, the first thing you tell them is your name. You say you, yeah. uh, you have a strong conversation. You say, "Hey, my name is this. Nice to meet you." And that's kind of the importance of knowing someone is your name. And that's what they want. Don't want us to have is the not knowledge of Yahuwah and being able to have that relationship with them on a on like almost a human level basis of knowing someone's name. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so fifteen is keep the Passover. Under keep the Passover, we have a ton of things under this, and we will um, get close to Passover. Things we definitely nail that. There's a lot of about Passover. If you get it. so, 16, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And it says my internet's a little, but I think we're going to continue on. Uh, 17, it says there is one Torah for the stranger and one for the Ebrium. And anyone want to expand upon that at all? So, so there's one Torah, one for the Ebrium, for the stranger and the Who's Ebrim? the Ebrium? What are the Ebrium? The Ebrium were the Hebrews, the actual people that came out of of the lineage of Jacob, Yashrael, and there was the the uh, foreigner, the uh, stranger, which you know, which came out of them, which came out of Egypt with them on their way out, and the stranger joined up with Yashrael. They said, we want to be part of your tribe, so we see your Elohim is powerful, we see that he brings blessings upon us, you let us join you, and, he said, and they said, all right, so Yahuwah made a command saying, if you want to join Yashrael, you have the same Torah as they have, which means the statement the Torah was only for the Jews is actually false. 
Yeah, and that would that would be incorrect anyway because the Jews is only one tribe. One, used. Out, one out of twelve. Yeah, at one out of twelve, and so that doesn't even represent the majority of the tribe. And so, um, yeah, we have one Torah. And so when people are like, well, this to- we're Gentiles, and the, they're proud Gentiles, they're like, oh, we eat the bacon because we're Gentiles. Well, that that's there's no house of Gentile anywhere in the Bible. And so if you if you're looking for that for the house of Gentile to be saved, it's not it's not happening. All right, so sanctify all your firstborn to Yahuwah. And this was one we were um, a little iffy on, and it's one we actually need Emissary of Elohim. There's a couple of uh, uh, things. I know Emissary of Elohim is a little bit behind watching our videos, but there is some in here that I think he would be an expert on some of this stuff. Some of this we don't have. We don't understand the redemption. We don't understand some of the stuff, but we do know that we need to sanctify all firstborn to Yahuwah. So um, as, as you see those further on, brother, I hope you uh, do some comments and, and help out. All right, there are no mighty ones before Yah. Um, what, what does that mean? There are no mighty ones before Yah. That means there is nothing else before Yah. Yahuwah should be one and only. He should not be some. There should be nothing else to worship. You should devote your heart to Yahuwah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and mighty ones could be anything. Mighty ones could be your paycheck. Right? Yeah, it could be money. You, people, people uh, like worship money. Well, they'll sell their soul for money. I mean, there's, they'll absolutely sell their soul for money. All right, I bring Yah. To not now, a lot of people will will swear. They actually swear, and if they are swearing and using the pagan name, are they bringing Yah's name to not? I would say since they consider that his name, I would say yeah, probably. Yeah, I would, I would, I would agree with you on that. All right, twenty one. One of my favorites. Keep short. Very, very important. Two hundred and forty plus times in our scriptures that it has that. Um, if you guys here, I guess a lot of the scriptures yet, but. It, there will be a lot more, especially by the time you make it to the end of the Bible. There are tons of scriptures. All right, 22. One of, one of my favorites here, um, you guys know, I always do this, honor your parents. Um, I think it's very important. Uh, kids do this, and um, it is uh, it is important, right? So right. 23, do not kill. Do not break wedlock. Do not steal. Do not make false accusations against your neighbor. Do not covet anything of your neighbor. Do not make an altar from rock that a tool has touched. Do not go up to the altar by the steps. And these two, these two commands right here, these ones might be something that are um, that may or may not be in this list when we are done. Um, there's some of the stuff. I mean, I you know we we should probably shouldn't be making altars um, unless we know what we're doing. We definitely should, probably shouldn't be sacrificing things upon the altars. Um, but the other one, do not go up to the altar by the steps. We have not figured that one out exactly as well, so uh, maybe some light on that one. All right, commandment 30, do not oppress the fatherless or the widow. All right, well, that's on the cross. That means we can take out the fatherless and the widows. Fair game, I right? Mean, that, should be, that should be more of the moral law than anything. I mean, you wouldn't want to hurt someone that's already having struggles in life. You don't. If there's no fatherless, back in the day, there was no one to provide for them. They were on their own. Basically, the people had to provide for the fatherless and the widow because the men were supposed to go out, and they were supposed to work, and they were supposed to bring in the crops. Yeah, you know, and it, there's something to be said. You know, if you're if you're a widower or a widow, man, your life has been ripped away from you. It doesn't matter how you ended up becoming a widow, it, it or a widower. I don't know what the male term of it is. I think it's the same thing. Is it the same thing? Widow and widower. Widow in. Widower. Widower. So you know, there's there's something that that is you know, Yah looks out for those who are broken, right? Yeah, I've known a lot of widows, and I've known some that that get. People really want to take advantage of widows for some reason. I do not know what the, the actual evil is, but they, they definitely do. And so these are things that we can do. And if we're looking for tithes, if you're looking for something that you can give back to Yah, you know, go go help the widows. Go help the fatherless. Go help those who are in need. And, you know, there's there's your tithes are being added, you know, ten times to you. And if you, ben, if you hate the Torah, then you're okay with hurting the widows. Right, Nicole. Back to sanctifying all firstborn. Emissary of Elohim says, I think most are sparse on understanding exactly what the dedication of the firstborn is. That's us. And he's like, there is the Nazarene vow. Okay. And then the grand says, I don't remember, was dedication of the firstborn males only? Um, it, Emissary of Elohim, I don't, I don't know. It does say the firstborn of men among your children shall you redeem. Right. Okay. And that's I mean, in that's, Exodus it's everything. It's, we're talking animals. I think, yeah, I think you got, because you're supposed to give the beast to the Levites. Yeah, and there was some stuff in there, Emissary of Elohim, we did not know, um, you know, especially when they were redeeming them. It looked like um, the priests would actually give money if somebody wanted to come up and uh, 
uh, put a part of your land uh, or donate it to the priests for whatever it was during that time, um, you guys will have to drive that. That is, um, we don't understand the whole thing, but yeah, we'll get into that later. Let's finish on with this, right? Eli, do you have something? Yeah, he also said, rather well, than, than just firmly reinforcing the Shema with that child, and maybe that their life service would be more kingdom-centric, if you will, in their tasks like raising up a priest. All right, so that, that's good. Uh, let me reread that. But other than just fervently reinforcing the Shema with that child, and maybe that their life service would be more kingdom-centric, if you will, uh, in their tasks, like raising up a priest. Okay, that, that makes a little sense. As far as the animals reference Leviticus 17, purity of blood. Okay, cool. Let's let's continue on this. These are all awesome topics. We will go over this stuff. Let's continue on in this. Um, 31, do not eat what is torn of any beast. So, no roadkill. Don't eat the roadkill. No roadkill cafe for you. I mean, I feel like it's a very, uh, that's a very good law in the Torah. You all like, don't eat the sick animal on the side of the road. It's probably been torn up. There's probably been maggots and a whole bunch of nastiness already inside of it. If you eat it, you're probably going to have a whole bunch of disease because yeah. dead animals carry disease. I mean, that's just basic things Jehu's looking out for us in the Torah. You kill it, we grill it. Roadkill nope. Cafe. <laughs> okay, do not follow multitude of evil. That's a, that should seem like an obvious thing, right? Don't don't get around evil people. You should not be hanging around them. You will become who your friends are, and uh, it's very important that we keep ourselves clear. And if you don't need your children in the Torah, there they go. They might follow multitude of evil and become those kind of. Oh, people. absolutely. If your kids are not in, uh, see, I could never envision a world where you guys were just out there doing whatever it was online or going out in the world. They just it would be a mess. The Torah is everything. All right, 35, bring back your enemy's cattle if you find it going astray. Well, Christians, you know, that's on the cross. Let's just keep the cattle, right? No, that's not what we do. That's not what Yah wants us to do. Even, um, even if it's the enemy, even if it's your enemy or somebody you do not like, it's their animal, right? And the animal has nothing to do with that. It doesn't have to do with your issues. So, you know, you're supposed to help the animals. All right, stay away from rumors and gossipers. Yes, Facebook and Twitter, all of those uh, cesspools of evil, you should not be on. Uh, there's there's nothing good that comes from any of that stuff, and they're all CIA operations anyway. All right, take no bribes. Do not don't oppress a stranger. Didn't we have that before? Or is that just the like widow, the, the widow. widow and fatherless? All right, give your land rest in the seventh year. Again, this, that we are. This is this is this is the land we're talking about Israel. Um, we were talking about that this morning, trying to figure out and if we could actually get on the exact right calendar we knew we were at where we got to our jubilees and got to our things i think we would do this and i think Yah would probably bless that as well but again these are commandments of of the land and so we're trying to get these in as tight as we can for the ones that we can keep today without a shadow of a doubt very important right keep the yahua again iterate and then we go through a whole bunch of three your mother's milk and i guess that was a pagan thing i guess that was some sort of evil pagan thing where they would just you know kill the kid and then put it in the mother's milk and eat it all right obey the messenger yahuwah sends before you and i think that's an amazing commandment because that's something that could very well be for us today um, or coming soon do not bow down to other elohim serve yahuwah make no covenant with other elohim or outsiders of the land do not make or use this anointing oil on a normal person and this was the special sauce of what the um, priests were able to do, as well as this next one, 49. Do not make or use this perfume on a normal person. And he gives us the actual ingredients of this, and you know we're not, we're not to put that all together, that kind of concoction. Okay, don't eat the fat. And um, we had a couple of people that didn't actually know that until we actually started going through that. But it, yeah, the fat is Yah's. And it's probably unhealthy, number one. We probably shouldn't be eating that um, as you know, people of Yah, but it's not to be eaten. And he says that many times. I'm surprised we only have two commands on that, um, but it seems like he said that quite a bit. Commandment 51, do what you say you are going to do. And um, I, I, you know, these, are, these are things that I guess are common sense that people, I mean, this is something that, why, why would you want to be something, why would you want to go opposite, right? That would make you a liar. You know, if you're if you're gonna say something and you don't do it, it just it just makes you a, a liar. Okay, return. What is your neighbor's? Obey Yahuwah's dietary laws. Okay, give me some quick cling animals. Cow, chicken, uh, goat. Yep. Uh, sheep, giraffe. No. What? Yes. 
unclean. A, gir a, gira a giraffe has a, has a uh, it chews the cut and it has a split hoof. Wait, so we eat what? giraffe? Yeah, you eat a giraffe. I, I found that out the other day. Yes, gotcha. Okay, what are some unclean animals? Uh, pig, pig vulture. shrimp, shrimp, clams, vultures, the vultures. Yeah, coney. Rabbits. <laughs> gerbils. Don't eat the gerbils. Uh, what is the snakes. Yeah. All that stuff. Every Any other every, birds. Yeah. yeah. So it's, Don't it's, eat the bugs. No spiders yeah. for you. These, so anyway, we split these and there's these are unclaying. These are claying. Um, whoever touches the carcass, which is the dead body, you're unclaying. And so there's a lot of dietary. So commandment 54, this is a kind of a new one. And this is the, when we flesh these out, this is what we have here. So it's women's time of separation. Um, you're absolutely supposed to give your woman her time of separation. And um, we've gone over that uh, a little bit. And so this is yet another one, commandment 55, that Nicole finally got dialed in here. And um, it's obey Yahoo's hygiene laws. And there's actually quite a bit in it. Um, she's Mark this up a little bit. One is for all the children of Yashrael. One is for men of Yashrael, and one is for women of Yashrael. And um, again, um, we're, we're putting these things out there so that everybody can get eyes on this. And as we get everyone has eyes, these will probably change as you guys come up with more ideas, or we find commandments, or we we miss something. I mean, this is this is a work in progress, or a whip as they call it, a work in progress. We will continue on. And um, we will be dialing these in probably until Messiah Yahushua comes. And so, 56 is keep the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippurim. 57, no sacrifices to other gods. Oh, that's on the cross, Jason. Oh, yeah, you want to sacrifice to other gods? Okay. All right, 58, do not uncover the nakedness of your family. It should be obvious, but I mean, it's not. And so there's a lot of commandments there. You know, keep the clothes on. Okay. Do not take your woman's sister for a wife, okay? That's not good. Don't do that. Do not lie with a woman in her uncleanness, okay? Definitely don't do that. Very basic things. Like, nothing nothing crazy out of the Torah. Like, don't sleep more than eight hours, right? There's nothing crazy in the Torah. Yeah, and you ask the Christians, they're like, oh, I, don't, I hate these laws. They're, they're all gone. Which laws? Uh, I don't know. The laws yeah. of Moses. Yeah, what laws are too hard here? None of these so they, far They don't are know the laws. Impossible to do. Yeah, and, and now that we're actually putting these to paper... And you look at them in this. There's, um, there's, it's, there's nothing bad. All right, you shall not sacrifice your children to Moloch. Oh, oh man, dang! Now, now Moloch's gonna go hungry. Yeah, Moloch. Yeah, Anyways. we shouldn't even be saying that. We just broke Torah twice on that. All right, do not be gay. Don't. It's man and man. They're not man and man. It's not man and man. It is man and woman and woman and man. Don't go the other way. Right. Keep it straight. Okay. Do not lie with a beast. Uh, definitely normal. Not normal. Be holy. Do not reap the corners of your field or you shall not glean your vineyard. And again, this one would pertain to the land, but I believe that we are going to do this in our own little way. When we, when we do this, we'll, we'll take the corners of it. And they really can't get to our lands, but I mean, we'll take it and go find somebody and make sure they have it. Do not deal falsely or defraud your neighbor. Again, these are things like, ah, oh, they're on the cross. Oh, man, I, gotta, I can't rip my neighbor off anymore. Whoops. Well, that's the thing. And the Christians, like, if the Christians um, don't want these commands, by default, they're going to be, you know, you wouldn't want to do business with these guys, right? Because right now, if the, if the laws are on the cross, this does not pertain to anybody, then they could deal falsely and they could defraud you and it's not in their moral code. Yeah, without code. the Torah, they're on their own terms and they can rip you off how yeah. they please. Yeah, and they can, they can do whatever they want to do. And so if, you do not, if you're dealing with people that are not Torah-based, you might get ripped off. That's just the way it is. All right, do not lie. Obvious, there we go. Um, pay your workers for the day's wage they are due. Do not harm the disabled. Oh, again, we shouldn't trip the blind. We shouldn't put stumbling blocks. We shouldn't hurt the deaf. I mean, this is seems like basic commands, but obviously not enough that Yah didn't have to create a command because we're obviously people were doing that. Okay, do not be a liar. Didn't we have this? Do well, not. Sixty-seven is. This one all the time. Okay, I do it every time, so I guess we'll just keep on. So one sixty-seven is do not lie, and the other ones do not be a liar. Um, it, bottom line, don't, don't tell lies. Don't be dishonest. I mean, there's no reason to ever, ever tell a lie. Okay, 71, do not endanger your neighbor. Uh, do not hate your brother. Let me go quickly back to do not be a liar. Are car salesmen liars? I mean, they, if they say the car's well, What about any shape. salesperson at all? Like, it depends on how they sell how it How would you. you guys keep the Torah? If your job was to sell Amway 
and you go door to door, how would you how would you guys do this without breaking the Torah? I mean, because every the, the, every job sales. of a salesperson is to technically, you know, it's, it's kind of being a liar. You, you would know? just have to be honest with what product it is that you're selling. Yeah, well, you, the soap, too great, you know, you get six years of soap, but unfortunately, it gives you a rash about th- year three, and it will continue on until your body's completely festering. Wait, I shouldn't say that. Right there we go. So uh, there's like I have a soap, but it's not too great. <laughs> yeah, I have a soap, but you you should only use it for a year. It's much cheaper to actually buy it in the store than it is for me. But here you go. <laughs> See, it'd be hard. Okay, let's let's continue on. All right. Uh, do not endanger your neighbor. Do not hate your brother. Boys. Yep. Yeah, we going over this. Do we need to go over? No, nah, I think we go over almost every video. <laughs> I don't think we go over it every video. This, it's why close. is it why is it important not to hate your brother, Jade? I mean, because one, they're your brother. Yeah. What else? Um. Because of Messiah Yahushua was sitting right next to law. us. It's a law. <laughs> yeah, it is. And if Messiah Yahushua was sitting next to us, I doubt you guys would say the things you guys said. I don't think any of us would say the things we'd say. We'd all be on the best behavior, which is what we should be on, because he is. I mean, I guarantee you he hears everything. The messengers send messages back, and they, they know what's up. All right. Rebuke your neighbor for his sin. Very important. Don't let your neighbor continue on his sin. At least get your word out that you are that he is doing evil, and that way you do not find uh, guilt. You're not you're not guilted. Okay, love your neighbor as yourself. Oh, let's, is that the same as brothers? Are you guys brothers or neighbors? Uh, both. Both. I mean, neighbor and brother. I mean, if you are Israel, your family, anyways. I mean, your neighbor isn't just the guy next door. It's everybody everywhere. Do you guys ever go through the day without breaking these? Commands. Uh, these two or last two or three have been a uh, little struggling. Little struggle ones, huh? Oh, jeez. <laughs> All right. Do not diverse your cattle. Do not mingle your seed. Uh, and that's talking about seed. that's uh, that is like sowing seed. That is like mm-hmm. uh, field seed. Do not mingle your wool unless you want to vibrate off the planet and probably end up very painful. Do not lie with a taken woman. That uh, obvious. Uh, do not eat fruit of three years. Yeah, this is a this is in the land kind of a thing, but the study and the research that we did on this, it sounded like that if you eat the fruit of the tree prior to three years, it actually dis it, it hurts the tree, and so you want to give it all the nutrients that it possibly can. So this is actually probably a really good command if you're trying for like a whole grove of trees. All right, do not practice ah sorcery. All right, is big pharma. Sorcery. Uh, yes. yeah, it does stuff to your body you shouldn't do, so probably. Their name, their name in itself, a big pharma, is literally derived from like sorcery. Pharmacia. What about insulin? Is insulin pharmacia? Uh, is it sorcery? I want, is it natural? I don't blink. I don't think is anything. I don't think plants? anything coming out of big pharma is natural. I think Nothing. it's all. Uh, I think it's all off the 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 books of y'all. What y'all wanted us to heal ourselves with, so. Yeah, and I mean, we shouldn't be getting diabetes unless we're eating unhealthy anyway, unless you're a glutton like myself, um, which ended up with that, and now I'm trying to reverse it. Um, But there's commandments there. I should have changed my ways long before that. So, yeah, do not practice sorcery. What what other kinds of sorcery do we have? Uh, I mean, physical magic. Uh, What about uh, about Halloween? Yeah, I I, I mean, that's that's important. I mean, those people do all sorts of sorcery. I mean, I think drinking blood is sorcery. I I mean, people people literally cast spells and sacrifice children still. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so there's all sorcery all around us. Do not round your beard or the corners of your beard. Don't be a beta. <laughs> yeah, uh, don't round your beard. Um, so I'm thinking this is like a thing how they that people would like shape their heads and stuff for certain things. Back what about a day. goatee? How about all these people that have these little yeah, I mean, unmanly things. I, I think if you, I'm, I'm sorry, guys, if you guys have unmanly beards, you could always grow it out. It doesn't have to be a full full beard, but. I, I believe that every man should have a beard, and I mean, I'll tell you why, um, at least down here, is my face is completely protected, right? Like, if I did not have a beard, I'd probably take, uh, I mean, before, I've, I've gotten a grinder stuck in my beard. I've saved my neck from grinders, and, I, I, you know, bugs would take me out. I'd have all sorts of bad things. Plus, my wife likes my beard, right? Yeah. Yes? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. All right. Do not get tattoos. Don't touch your body. Do not put your daughter. Uh, again, that's that, like, that, Chris, is this the one you want on the cross? Oh, okay. I'll, I'll. It should be an obvious thing, man. It's like, protect your daughter with everything, man. Everything, yeah. I'm sorry, I was talking about his daughter just a few minutes ago. Her name is Yami Cadence. Yami? Hi, Yami. If you're out there, hi, Yami, from all of us. All right. Um, do not defile your temple. Uh, do not consult the media. Again, a medium would probably have something to do with Ph- sorcery. Uh, the pharmacy, dude. 
Yeah, the, the fortune teller. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, far, the salesman for the pharmacia. Oh, people. what's those guys that are behind the counter? What are they called the the pharmacist? pharmacist. Pharmacist. Thank you. Yeah, no, that's not that's not a medium, but that is probably a drug dealer by any means. So I love him singing the beard song. <laughs> you could more beards in the neighborhood that's right you say you can't i tell you you should no no beard no good (laughs) all right respect your elders um very important correct weights and measurements seems obvious do not walk in the manners of the nations eli why wouldn't i want to walk in the manners of the nations friend um because that's evil it's against the torah Um, What what are the ways of the nations um the opposite of the Torah. Sunday worship. Sunday worship. Torahlessness. God it's God, a, God, God worship. There's a whole bunch of uh, wickedness. They do sacrifices. There's pedophilia. There's uh, horrible stuff. Yeah, horrible stuff all throughout throughout the gen- uh, the other nations. And that's something you don't want to do. When you look at Babylon, that's something you're gonna want to walk against. You're not gonna want to walk with them. Yeah, the beardo weirdos. That's right. We <laughs> emissary Melon. All right. Uh, you shall stone the wizards and mediums. Okay. Can we do this in today's environment? Not without getting like forty years in prison. Should we grab? Should we grab the uh, the pharmacists and drag them out and and chuck rocks at them? We should, but we can't technically. Why not? I mean, one, they will end up with a life sentence, and two, we're not in the land. Yeah, we're not. We're not in the right land. We're not. It's, Yaw's uh, we're not, not under Yaw's like. Uh, under y'all's like uh, judgments at the moment, where like what do you uh, mean? What are you talking about? Like we're like. Have you seen North America? I understand, but we're not like <laughs> under where like y'all would be like, okay, this guy's getting stoned. But if not, we have now we have the government of the Babylon, which would be like, no, you are, you are a bad person. Doesn't matter what your Bible says, you're going to prison. Yeah, you should see if that holds up in court. And so we are, <laughs> we are, we are in slavery right now. Is what we are. are. So we we got to come out of slavery. And so this is what this these times are all about. Uh, all right, so feast of first fruits. We're almost done, guys. Shavuot and Omer count. Feast of trumpets, Yom Teror. Feast of Sukkot, Shimni Atzeret. I think I messed that up. I think you got it right. Atzeret. Yeah, I think you got it. If you blaspheme the name of Yahuwah, you shall be put to death. And again, that's. Everyone's, sh- everyone's yeah. getting put to death. Everyone in Babylon. If you home. watch, back in the days when we used to watch movies, they used to swear all the time. And they would always take, they would always say horrible, horrible things. And even they got their names wrong. In their minds, it's the right name. They don't know any different. So they're bringing all this stuff. You shouldn't blast me, Yah. I mean, this is ridiculous. Okay. If you kill your neighbor's animal, you must give him another. Yeah, seems good. And, uh, you know, again, if you're dealing with the Christians, you know, don't let them hold on to your animals or anything because if they, they accidentally kill them, they're not going to give you back because those laws are on the cross. Okay. Repay injury for injury. Um, what does that mean? Eli, you knocked my wisdom teeth out when you were just a little kid. Does that mean I should knock your, your wisdom teeth out now? Yes! Not there yet. No. Yet. That's no. bad. That's not loving your neighbor. What are you guys doing? You just broke Torah. <laughs> no. So no. What, what's that? No wisdom teeth yet, so you can't. Uh, it's just his baby wisdom teeth are coming in, so maybe one day. All right. Honor the Jubilee year. Very important. Do not charge your brother interest. Commandment 98. And that is all the commandments that we have right now. And that we have, and almost we are hundred. almost a hundred. Yeah, there's no six thirteen, but we're gonna break into our handy dandy split screen, and we are gonna go into this and get ready to do some numbers five. All right, so here we go. Um, much love to everybody out there, whoever's out there. Uh, much love to you guys, and uh, thank you guys for holding on and listening in on this stuff. And um, you know, if you guys see that we have missed commandments or that you guys find commandments when you're reading. Um, then please uh, let us know. We're, we're doing this. All right. So this is called the purity of the camp um, and is what they have it in the NIV. So let's go. And Yahuwah has spoken to El Moshe, saying, Command the children of Yashrael that they put out the camp, every leper and everyone that has an issue and whosoever is defiled by the dead. Both male and female shall ye put out without the camp, shall ye put them that they defile defile not their camps in the midst whereof I dwell. Okay. That's something interesting is that they still had lepers inside the camp for like a whole year straight. They still kept everyone that was sick inside the camps even while they were doing all their things they were doing. So it's camp outside of it. So it has it. Yeah, but now now they're putting them outside. Now this is like after the, all the temples built and everything, like, okay, now put them outside. When do we, when do we know they and they were hanging out for with lepers? Well, it says here... Tell Moses to put them outside the camp. If you go back to Leviticus 14, he had to be outside the yeah, camp you're because out. the priest had to go outside the camp and check on them. So I don't. Yeah, you don't let them. the lepers deal with you. So this is this is a question. The question here is 
if you guys ended up with leprosy, what do we do? Take me outside. Put yeah, somewhere put, else so we don't infect the rest of the house. Yeah, put you out in the, the car outside or something for, for a while. Yeah, and I, I is this a command that you would have for today? Um, it should definitely be something you guys should regard. Like, well, okay, this guy's like can get us all killed because he's got some crazy like. Well, that, that's the thing. None of this this stuff is all something that could end up plaguing us all and getting us all killed. So, is this a command for today? Yeah, I would say so. If somebody has a leprosy, maybe. Well, if somebody has a, sp I mean, if you guys end up with a splot on your arm, I'm gonna look at this. I'm gonna go what the, the priests did. I mean, if it's a sunken in. Uh, thing with a white hair, uh, you guys are probably gonna have to go sit outside in the car for a while, you know, and, and live out there until you guys are healed up. Um, but yeah, so it should be a command. If it, but the question is, where should it go under hygiene laws? Probably. I would think so. Probably. I think I talked about this before. Yeah, I think this is a hygiene law thing. So I think Nicole has a little bit of work cut out. All right, let's roll into four. And the children of Yashrael did so and put them out without the camp, as Yahuwah has spoken to Moshe. So did the children of Yashrael. Okay, so they're gone. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yashrael, When a man or woman shall commit any sin that men commit to do a trespass against Yahuwah, and that person be guilty, then they shall confess their sin, which they have done, and he shall recompense his trespass with the principle thereof, and add unto it the fifth part thereof, and give it unto him against whom he has trespassed. Okay. So I feel like that shall kind of like, like confess your sins to Yahuwah. Okay, so what are we saying here? So, when it, so any time that we sin, we need to confess, right? Yeah, you right. Confess it. This is dealing with um, a, a trespass against Yahuwah. And he was supposed to get restore his guilt in its principle. Right. So, I mean, this is this is about repaying mm -hmm. what you have like if you have stolen something, right, mm -hmm. or you broke something and you had to to re, repay it. So, is this a command right here? Ah, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I think so. I think it would be part of a command. I don't know if. Uh, so, what would the commandment be? Confess, confess your, your sin and confess repay. Your, confess your sin and repay what is due to people? Yeah, repay. Yeah, I think so. Okay. So, if you've done evil, if you've, if you, it says, though, if you trespassed against Yahuwah. And trespassing against Yahuwah would be what? Going against his Torah. Anything against the Torah, right? And that would be trespassing against all of his, Yah's people, right? Or doing something evil. Okay, so that, I think that would be commandment, Nicole. So, what is it? Um, confess your sins. Confess your sins to Yahuwah and repay what is due to that person you, you've offended against. Okay. All right, so we're on eight. Yep. Let's do this. All right, Nicole's working that. Okay, but if the man have no kinsman to recompense the trespass unto, let the tras trespass be recompensed unto Yahuwah, even to the priest, beside the ram of the atonement, whereby an atonement shall be made for him. Okay, there's nothing we can do there because we're dealing with a priest and we're dealing with payback. Okay, and every offering of all the holy things of the children of Yashrael, which they bring unto the priest, shall be his. Okay? okay, and every man's hallowed things shall be his. Whatsoever any man gives the priest, it shall be his. So these are just like... Uh, so we're giving gifts to the priest. Gifts to the priest. No one did give to the priest, basically. You can't take back what you stole. How's that different than a bribe? Okay, I don't think... So this is like maybe like... Hey man, thanks for helping me out. Here's a gift for you. Thanks for like helping with my sins or something like that. I don't think you'd be like, hey man, here's a uh, here's the here's this. I'd probably tip know. my my priest. Yeah, I'd, I, I'd probably like toss them. You want to you want to take care of them. They're not they're not have no other way to provide for themselves other than what you're sacrificing and what you're giving as a donation to them as their whatever the sin offering was. So right, and the guy in the pulpit isn't a Levite. Yeah, the guy in the pulpit. Yeah, definitely the five hundred one c three is not we who should you should be. We shouldn't be giving our stuff to him. Absolutely not. No. A priest was a guy who was sacrificing God. He was anointed by God. He was living selected straight from birth to Yah to basically live as a priest with no inheritance but with the sacrifice and the things that were given yeah, to him. Yeah, absolutely. So, absolutely. Good point. All right. 11. And Yahuwah has spoken to Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yashrael and say unto them, If any man's woman go aside and commit a trespass against him, and a man lie with her carnally, and it be hid from the eyes of her man, and be kept close... And she be defiled, and there is no witness against her, neither she be taken in the manner. Okay, what is the so saying here? This is if a woman cheats on her husband, and nobody finds out, it's just a concealed matter, nothing, nobody knows, and then this is where we get to where... And so this is interesting, this talks about the Ruhak of jealousy. So we're talking about an actual, is this a demon or is this a spirit? I, I don't know, because I feel like Yahuwah says, I am Yahuwah, I am a jealous L. 
is that a spirit of jealousy a righteous spirit of jealousy or is there an actual demon of jealousy well and that's the thing is the woman innocent or is the woman guilty and well, that's the thing out. and if, if you have no idea your woman is cheating on you you would have no idea what would you have to be jealous of and so this is almost like Yah is like telling the man that your woman you know you have something's not right all right and the, <clears throat> Did I do read 14? No. And the Ruach of jealousy come upon him, and he be jealous of his woman, and she be defiled. Or if the Ruach of jealousy come upon him, and he be jealous of his woman, and she be not defiled. Okay? Then shall the man bring his woman unto the priest, and he shall bring her offering for her, the tenth part in ephah of barley meal. He shall pour no oil on it upon it, nor put frankincense thereof thereon, for it is an offering of jealousy, an offering of memorial, bringing iniquity to remembrance. Now, this there's, I'm a little confused on this whole thing because if you if she is an adulterer, you would not take her back, right? Do we right, but, but I don't think he completely knows at this point. Right. Okay. If he doesn't know, I wonder how many times a priest had to deal with this in a week, like. Oh boy, here we go again. Probably it, this is very this chapter is very interesting. All right, let's go on. And the priest shall bring her near and set her before Yahuwah. And the priest shall take holy water in an earthen vessel, and of the dust that is in the floor of the tabernacle, the priest shall take it and this, put it in the water. Okay, she's gonna drink some muddy water. This is dust. It's really special dust. All right. And the priest shall set the woman before Yahuwah and then cover the woman's head. And put the offering of memorial in her hands, which is the jealousy offering. And the priest shall have in his hand the bitter water that causes the curse. Okay, this is a point I want to talk about here because um, I was just, I wasn't actually debating a gentleman on uh, 153 News. But he was talking about how women need to have their heads covered. And I said there was no Torah command anywhere outside of Brother Paul, Brother Shaul, who has, he, he set his own doctrine up. Brother Shaw set his own doctrine up for widows. Like, he has his own requirements for how to be a widow or how to be like a... Uh, how, if you can help a widow or not, even though you should yeah. help all widows, it doesn't matter how what age you are, you should help the widows. Yeah, and so Brother Shaw set, the like, his own requirements up, and he was dealing with issues, people's issues. And somehow, now people believe, and I, I unless, I don't know of the Torah command, I, unless maybe Emissary of Elohim out there... And I'm sure it's probably okay to cover your head. I'm just saying there's not. He said hair is a covering. Hair is a covering. Okay. And so when you just basically your hair, you let the hair down. Yeah. And I B says loosen her hair. Loosen the hair, right? And we've dealt with that before. Where do we deal with loosen the hair? When he was dealing with men, right? Yeah, it was in the priests. The priests had to loosen their when hair. The priests could not let the when they put on their ha head, their turban, and everything. They could not. They were not supposed to let their head, their hair fall. It was when they also had like a family member die. Oh right. They couldn't let their hair down, or they did let or their they, hair down. I and they remember. shouldn't look like a, yeah. or like a wreck. Okay, yeah. So it's very interesting because you know people have women covering their heads all the time, and um, I, I don't. You know, I guess that would be the man and, and the woman, and it'd be you know, it's a, it's just there's no Torah command that says that that I've ever found. So it was interesting here and uncover the woman's head. And like Emissary of Elohim said, that's just, you know, letting the, the hair down. So it's great having you on, brother. All right. And the priest shall charge her by an oath and say unto the woman, If no man have lain with you, and if you have not gone aside to uncleanness with another inside of your man, instead of your man, be free from this bitter water that causes the curse. So, okay, so if you are a guilty woman and you're about to drink this stuff, you're probably about to freak out. Like you are, you're either going to be freaking out or you're going to be probably angry at your old man for putting you in this situation. Yeah, I mean, if nothing happened, she was innocent. I'd be, if I was one, I'd be very upset. Well, you took, you didn't trust, and you brought me for this. Yeah, no, there's going to be some uh, marriage issues inside of this marriage for sure. Hopefully, she's uh, innocent, and hopefully, this man can can make this right. But she's going to be, I mean, this is going to be something that, you know, it's people are going to talk about this, right? You're going to take, you know, oh, uh, Samuel brought his wife, you know, Daniela, you know, before the, the priest because they had some issues. And I mean, it's not going to, I'm sure all, even going up to the priest and stuff, I mean, going into that, you're not going to have the same priest for everything, I don't think. So, I mean, this is the infidelity priest, or I, I don't even know if that is true or not. But it, it's going to cause shame on you. It's, it's this is a big deal. This is a huge thing, especially if this curse comes to pass, which we'll read yeah. about. That's a crazy thing. Yeah, and so this is Yah's way. But if you have gone aside to another instead of your man, and if you have de if you be defiled, and some man have lain with you beside your man, then the priest shall charge the woman with an oath of cursing, 
And the priest shall say unto the woman, Yahuwah, make you a curse and an oath among your people. When Yahuwah makes your thigh to rot and your belly to swell. Wow, these are terrible things, right? Um, who, who would want their thigh to rot and their belly to swell, right? So that's the thing. And I mean, in, in, the, in a just Yah's world, when this situation happened, um, it's, it's interesting. I don't know how many women had their thighs rot and their bellies swell, but I mean, it would be obvious. I mean, what happens then? I mean, if your wife, you went home and her, her belly swelled and her legs rotted off or something, uh, you know, you would, you would, you, I guess, write a, the woman a divorce thing and then send her away. But this is Yah's way of making sure that things, things are right. Because if your wife is cheating on you or you're cheating on your men or something, um, or vice, vice versa, then, you know, you guys see what I'm saying here. Mm -hmm. All right. So, and I, I guess the question I have is what about a woman? What about a woman? I mean, you can't just go, what happens when your man cheats on you? Why doesn't a man need to go before the priest, right? You, you're, you're inside of adultery if you're not in a marriage. And if you're outside of your marriage, and I mean, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have more than one wife because that is possible. If you have more than one wife, it's not adultery. But if you are, if your man goes and does this, is he just off the hook or? or well, we talk about, uh, I believe it's, we've already read it or later, if, uh, if there's like cheating going on, if a man like cheats with another woman or like goes and defiles his neighbor's uh, wife. Yeah, you kill him. You stone him, he dies. Yeah, yeah. So he, he actually gets killed for the whole thing. So. Yeah, but this is, the thing about adultery is, it's one of those things that it's a, it's a hidden secret. Right? Nobody, nobody's out there like, I mean, hey, I think I'm going to And then I think this today. is where the spirit of jealousy is actually from Yah because when you have wickedness like this in the camp and it causes someone to cheat, they're going to cheat again and it's going to bring wickedness on that land yeah. because that person's going to cheat. More so if this spirit of jealousy comes up and he brings the thing, it either stops right there or it never happened. And whatever happens, it stops right there. All the wickedness stops right there and the land is cleansed once again. Yeah, well, hopefully, hopefully it's just not women that get taken up like this. Hopefully the men have their day as well and, and can make this right. Okay, and this water that causes the curse shall go into your bowels to make your belly to swell and your thigh to rot, and the woman shall say, Amen, Amen. Wow. Okay, and the priest shall write these curses in a suffer, and he shall blot them out with the bitter water. Okay, wow. So, do you guys understand what that's saying? So, basically, I mean, there's, there's a whole formula for an adultery. You know, you're writing it up, and then you take this, this stuff. All right, this is wild. All right, and he shall cause the woman to drink the bitter water that causes the curse, and the water that causes the curse shall enter into her and become bitter. Wow, if you are a cheating woman and you are sitting here and you take a swig of that, and all of a sudden, you know, it's, it's going to become obvious, right? You're no longer going to be a liar. You're going to be exposed. Um, this, is, this is crazy stuff. The Grand said this is one of the commands that makes me think Yah wouldn't approve multiple spouses. Yah's heart was broken by Israel's whoring. Yeah, well, and that, well, that's the thing. It, it, there was a time and a place for it. If you are looking at a time long ago, when if you if you had one single wife and like three kids, like you have right here, you would have some Amorites come by and destroy your entire house, right? They come in and there'd be nothing left. But if you had five wives and forty kids, you would be able to defend that. You'd be able to get your crops out. You'd be able to do all this. It was always about multiplying and be fruitful. And so it was as a time such as this, but. Um, you know, if you can't be faithful to a wife, I mean, you, there's no reason you should ever have two. <laughs> All right, twenty. Where are we at? We are oh, in. I is it twenty-four? Mm. I run. He's gonna. Yeah, we're on twenty-four. Tw I just did that one, didn't we? Okay. Uh, we can bit it. I think I read twenty-four. Let's. It sounded so good. Let me read it again. And he shall cause the woman to drink the bitter water that causes the curse, and the water that causes the curse shall enter into her and become bitter. I love it twice. Okay. Then the priest shall take the jealousy offering out of the woman's hand. And shall wave the offering before Yahuwah and offer it upon the altar. And the priest shall take a handful of the offering, even the memorial thereof, and burn it upon the altar, and afterward shall cause the woman to drink the water. I wonder what happens if she wouldn't drink the water. Do they just pick up rocks to kill her? I mean, that would just basically say you're guilty, right? Because if you're if you're not guilty, the water wouldn't do anything to yeah, you. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, so I, I mean that the person who doesn't want to drink the water is probably gonna be uh, the the guilty, okay. And so this is a this is a good thing. And I mean, people know this. Hey, if you want to cheat, you're gonna go drink yeah, the water. Yeah, drink it. There's not a lot of repercussions for that now. Thigh is gonna rot. Yeah, it's nothing. Nothing. So it's like back in the day, you actually had you actually feared cheating. Something bad would happen. Yeah, you're accountable for this. Okay. And when he has made her to drink the water, 
Then it shall come to pass that if she be defiled and have done trespass against her man, that the water that causes the curse shall enter into her and become bitter, and her belly shall swell, and her thigh shall rot, and the woman shall be a curse among her people. Well, would she be a curse or would she be dead? Because if she's an adult, I mean, this would basically say you're an adulteress. So, I mean, at that point, you would, you would. I think when it becomes a curse, it's more of like she's a sign, like, do not cheat, you'll end up like her. Uh, that's probably right. And if the woman be not defiled, but be cling, then she shall be free and shall conceive seed. This is the Torah of the jealousies when a woman goes aside to another instead of her man and is defiled. Or when the ruhak of jealousy comes upon him and he be jealous over his woman and shall set the woman before Yahuwah and the priest shall execute upon her all this Torah. Then shall the man be guiltless from iniquity and his woman and this woman shall bear her iniquity. So that's interesting because the man would still, if, if he had laid with her afterwards, he would be an adulterer. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, this is this is a big deal right here. All right, well, I think that is it. Mick just popped in. Hey, Mick. Is it Mick? Yep. Hey, Mick. Hey, it's Mick Jones. How you doing, buddy? I hope you guys are doing well. I hope everyone's doing well out there. Um, thank you guys very, very, very much um, for hanging out with us. It is a small ecclesia, just exactly like we like it. It's a family ecclesia, just like we like it. And um, as we said before, you guys are all part of our little family here. We, we really appreciate you. We appreciate your time. Um, we get a lot out of you guys um, learning stuff. Pre appreciate the Grand and Emissary of Elohim. Thank you guys for, um, uh, you know, hanging out, you know, hanging out with us and, and doing the stuff. Um, I guess if nobody has any other questions, anyone in the chat have any other questions or anything at all? Um, Emissary Elohim talks says it's like uh, he's talking to the Grand about she lost seventy five percent of her hair when she was sick. Oh, okay. So he's help telling her what she would he need. Eight, ta eight tablespoons of coconut oil a day can reverse Alzheimer's and dementia. Yeah, they probably can. Coconut oil is a natural healing stuff. Uh, my wife made me ingest a bunch of that stuff years ago, and I can't deal with coconut t today uh, because of that. So anyway, um, that is it. Anyone else have anything, Jade? Um. To, I'm, I'm gonna speak really quick. Okay. Um, it is a Shabbat day. If this is your first time ever hearing from us, or this is your first time on this channel at all, uh, Yahoo has put you here for a very special reason. He is calling out to you today to change your ways, to change your entire world, how you how you live, how you should rest, how you should live on the Shabbat, and what you should do, how you should read your Bible. Um, today is the day you you can call out on the name of Yahusha and you can be saved. You can begin the walk of the Torah. Today is the beginning of your new journey, of your walk in the light of the path, that narrow path that will bring you to the kingdom and not the wide path of destruction. Absolutely. Yeah, very well put. And we are here to say, and we are here to say from the top of our lungs and shout it that the laws of Yahuwah are good today, Tomorrow, yesterday, forever, and forever and ever. Until heaven and earth are passed away, even then I believe they will still be there. But we will know that there would be a change in the Torah when the heaven and earth is gone. But we still see heaven, we still see earth, and the laws still stick with us today. And we went over the laws of God. And if you are on the fence and you just are, you know, it's like, well, maybe I shouldn't keep them. Ask yourself, which laws are the ones that offend you the most? Which laws are the hardest laws that it is to keep in your life? Which laws make you feel guilty? Like maybe there's something that you should be changing or changing up. Because when we're walking the laws of Yah, there is a, there is a um, freedom. There's a freedom. I think James speaks about the freedom of uh, all of it. And when you are not living in guilt and you do not have guilt upon you all the time because you are living in sin and you're, you're needing constant forgiveness every day because you're just, you go out and do the same sin over and over and over and can't stop. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about doing the Torah, walking the Torah, and it creates strong men. It creates strong women. It creates strong families. It creates strong bonds, and um, there's nothing better. We are in an age right now of complete deception, of great evil, where everyone hates the, the laws of Yah, and you won't find a lot of people out there. I mean, we have a, a channel with uh, 22,000 subs, and we're looking at 11 people, 12 people right now that are sitting here um, that care about the laws of God. And that is amazing because, you know, in second Ezra, it, it talks about how the, the, the future is for, you know, basically Yah was sitting here watching everyone come through, but the future is only for a very few amount. It's, he's taking a grape out of his cluster and that will be us. And if that is the walk that you choose to walk, then it is a beautiful walk and is a, is a great life. All right. Anyone have anything else?
Read your Bibles, but not as something that has come and gone. Read it as something that applies to present day or that applies to your life, not as something that is historical, but as something that you can use in everyday life. Yep, and you can. You absolutely can. All right, guys. Well, that's it. Eli, you're going to click us off here in a second. Um, all right. Anyone have anything else? Shabbat shalom. Yep. Get some rest and read your Bibles. We will see you guys tomorrow. Yep. Blessings Shab all. Yep, blessings all. Shabbat shalom. All right. Shalom. Shalom.